Hello and welcome. This is two rounds of steady mobility and a little bit of endurance. Warm up first. Here we go. So we're starting with walk out to plank. Start in a nice hip width stance. You want to bend forward from your hip. You can either bend your knees and roll down or simply keep your back straight and then bend forward. Now when you crawl forward, you want to make sure that your body weight stays centered so that your hips do not shift too much left and right. It's almost impossible to control it completely, but you can try. And the way to do it is to really brace your core, pull the navel in, get your body as firm as possible, and you'll manage, I'm pretty sure. Do that for a couple more rounds. And when you're in your plank, make sure you have your nice plank position, middle fingers parallel and pointing forward, shoulders away from the ears as always. <whistles> Wonderful, lunging backwards, still warming up. So we want to warm up our hip flexors and our spine. Here we go. Start in a hip width apart stance and you want to step backwards into a deep lunge. That means that your knee comes almost into a 90 degrees and your hip really drops down to the floor so that your upper body might be in a line with your back leg. And that's where we can rotate. So step backwards, get one hand down on the floor that's the inside hand and then rotate to the bent knee. You can either have your hand on the floor or on your knee or you can have the elbow on your knee. So do whatever feels good and start a bit easy in that rotation and then go further. Really nice. Get at least one more round in. And here we go for a hamstring stretch. And since we're warming up, an active one. So you want to heel dig forward, alternating, really pulling your toes towards you and having that leg straight you're bending onto. You wanna exhale, bending forward, inhale, coming up, exhale, reaching forward, keeping the back and the arms long, and then inhale, coming up, really standing tall. This is a great exercise to do really slow with the breath. So you wanna exhale, come forward, and inhale, reaching up to the sky. Keep a steady pace. Since we're still warming up, we do want to keep, um, raise that heart rate a little bit so you might get warmed up already your body temperature raises a bit and also your breathing rhythm might accelerate a bit great one of my favorite stretches especially if you're a worker in front of your body chest stretch dynamically. So here we go. You want to interlace your fingers behind your sacrum. And before you start pulling your arms up, make sure your chest is high, your heels are grounded into the floor, and you're really standing tall with your head, crown of your head reaching toward the ceiling. Then slowly lift your arms and don't lift them higher than possible. You will know what's possible when your chest starts to drop. That was a bit too high. Then you're starting some evasive maneuvers with your upper body. So try to keep your chest, your rib cage strong and upright and only move from your shoulders. And you will see this is a great stretch for your chest, pectorals, 
and also your deltoids, your shoulder muscles. Great one. Now here we come to squat and hamstring stretch. There's a bit of a dance move. You can bring your toes out, so your feet pointing outwards when you're squatting, and then bringing your feet parallel again when you're folding forward. And you want to have your hands down at all times. Try to have that hand down at all times. If that is not possible, then have at least some contact with the hands either onto your shins or onto your thighs. Inhale when you squat, exhale when you bend forward. If that is too quick a breathing rhythm, of course you can breathe slower, but keep a steady rhythm for your movement. Great, and here we go. Surprise, running on the spot. So this is the dancing on the volcano movement. You don't want to stay too long on the floor. So really bounce back from the floor and then lift those knees up. And believe it or not, if you move those arms at the same time as your legs, this is actually helpful. So try to really be athletic in your arms, athletic in your legs, and make it your personal challenge to lift those knees as high as possible. And now since we're in the third quarter, third, third, <laughs> If these knees start to rub, no, pick them back up. It's only six more seconds. Pick them back up. Fast feet, fast arms. Breathe. <whistles> Wonderful. Here we go. This is our first round lunges and knee race. We're starting with the right leg. That is, the right leg is stepping backwards and then the same leg comes up into a knee raise. And these arms just want to go with you. These arms are really important because if you're going with your arms in a counter movement, that means when your right knee is up, your left arm is forward, right knee is up, left arm is forward, your spine actually rotates. So we're having a great spinal movement here. Step backwards as much as possible. So you're having a 90, 90 degree angle for both your forward leg and your back leg. Almost there, great. And here we go with the other leg. That will be the left leg. So get in position, ready to go. Here's our left leg stepping backwards. So make it as nice as possible. And I have good news for you. This is round one of two rounds. We're doing all kinds of positions. We are standing, we're lying, we are hovering not flying but we're trying to so this is really a 360 front back and side workout that allows you to recover certain parts of your body while moving and working on other parts of your body which is also great to get that heart pumping great that's four more seconds and you're done there we go we're starting to lie down on the floor in a side plank, left side up first. So the left side starts to work, your right arm is on the floor and your right outer arch. And now we want to keep that body hovering and pushing the right arm into the floor so that your shoulder can stay away from your ear. So stay really tall and long and then bring that arm overhead and then bring elbow and knee together like a side crunch and then stretch out again. If you want to, you can put that leg down, but the challenge is to keep that leg up in the air. I know you're getting tired, keep moving. We're changing soon. Little change. Get that leg around however you can. <laughs> Hair out of the way. So here we go with the right side. So 
So right side is moving into a side hovering crunch, but first make sure that your left arm is firmly on the ground. It's like a half sphinx position, 90 degree angle, 90 degree, 90 degree angle between your lower arm and your upper arm. You want to really push that lower arm into the floor so that your shoulder is very far away from your ear. And then move and work that side crunch as much as you can. You can move the head if you want to, moving along with your arm. And remember, you can drop that foot quickly and then pick it back up again or you shoot it out and keep it up in the air <whistles> nice one you can lie on the back we're doing a pilates press up so you're starting with your legs and your upper body in a 90 degree angle your feet are exactly above your hips if you want to point your feet then bring your arms with the arms facing downwards onto your mat really pressing down and this will shift your hips upwards so you really want to try to push with your arms this is more of a back workout than it is an abs workout but of course always stop the movement at the 90 degree angle that's where your lower abdominals are coming in and keep pushing through these arms and keep your upper body in that nice long open position well done <whistles> last exercise for this round we're doing single leg deadlifts starting with your right leg on the floor the left leg is hovering so we're starting to fly now you want to first have your balance your arms can either be on either side reaching out or if you want to they can reach forward with your thumbs pointing towards the ceiling this is an even greater upper back and lower back workout then bend your knee as low as you can without shifting your knee too far forward you still want to be careful with your knee and don't shift that knee too far forward keep your balance and keep moving here's where some endurance kicks in keep breathing and here we go left side left leg single leg deadlifts now have that right leg hovering and really try to have the leg and your upper body including your head in one straight line you don't want to bring that head forward you really want to have that head in line with your back as well as really engaging those glutes so both glutes are working here we're working lower back upper back especially if you're having those arms pointing forward with your thumbs pointing upwards we're working glutes and especially thighs and glutes of the standing leg keep breathing well done you're up for treat so this is a little mid-workout stretch so keep breathing and just come into our chest opening stretch interlace your fingers behind your sacrum behind your hips and then slowly move those arms up you might want to catch your breath a little bit before moving too high but this is actually a great exercise to increase the lightness in your chest especially when you're having a hard time breathing because you've been working out a bit so keep your chest up and start rooting yourself if you really feel like it you can also work a walk around in this move but make sure that even if you're walking making little steps that your chest stays up and your neck is really long and the crown of your head pointing towards the ceiling even if you're walking great you should have caught your breath a little bit so we go into our hamstring and squat stretch you can either make this a little bit more of a workout by increasing speed and really squatting down 
remember to turn your feet slightly outwards when you're squatting down or you can make that a little bit more of a recovery stretch by staying a little, lo a little bit longer in that forward fold and maybe even shifting your weight from one leg to the other. So just do what feels comfortable but we do want to release those hamstrings a bit because we have been working them a lot in those lunges and warrior three plain poses and we're gonna work them still. Great, so kicking the second round in with these runnings on the spot. Remember the dance on the volcano. So you should now be really warmed up. Your ankle should be warmed up, your knees and your shoulders should be warmed up so you can really go for it. Having a maximum of range of motion in your shoulders, in your legs, and really try to pick up those knees. If you have space, you can move forwards a little bit and then backwards. This is actually quite fun, but keep moving. And now, especially in these last 10 seconds, pick up those knees a little bit more. Make it your personal challenge. Three more seconds. Wonderful. Here we go for round number two. Starting again with the right leg, which means right leg is coming up and right leg is stepping backwards into that deep lunge. Now, since this is the second round and you might want to go a little bit further, you can actually come onto the balls of your feet, onto your toes when you're raising that leg. That makes a lunge and a raise on toes when you lift that knee. That means you can keep your balance. And if you want to go even further, you could jump. That means a lunge back and a jump and that knee will actually help you to pick your body up. Wonderful. Do the same thing on the other side. So that is the left leg stepping backwards and then either just standing and raising the knee in your own pace, keep a steady rhythm, or you can raise onto the balls of your right foot and keep your balance. Or if you feel like it, you can jump, which is a nice little jump, then first land and then step backwards again. This is really cardio. so. Do your own pace and your own rhythm. Ideally, you can keep up with the rhythm on the screen with the visual cue backwards, lifting, stepping backwards and lifting. Ha! Get down on the floor, side plank, knee to elbow. Starting with the left side, so the right elbow is on your mat or towel and the left arm is working. So by now you either are exhausted or full of energy and really pumped. So have your own level. You can also drop your knee on the floor instead of having the outer side of your foot down. So then bending the lower knee and having the knee touching the ground. You can also try to pick that leg a little bit higher up to really emphasize that crunch. Make it your own exercise. <laughs> then make a hip hop move or whatever you can to get onto the other side. Here we go. This is your left hand on the floor and your right arm working. Side plank, elbow to knee, right side is working. Now make sure you're, you're doing the same thing as you did on the other side. We want to have both sides working equally. So either on your foot or on your knee, either bringing your leg down with each repetition or 
shooting it out, hip, hip height. Or if you want to go even higher, you can pick that leg up, work your side glutes even a little bit more and keep breathing. Emphasize that side crunch that will be for your side abdominals. Great. Now lie on your back. Our back exercise. Pilates, push-ups. Here we go. So keep your arms flat on the ground, palms for facing towards the floor. Then start in a 90 degree angle with your feet exactly above your hips. And then without momentum, really from a steady position, press your arms into the floor and push your hips upwards. If you want to, you can point your feet, try to keep your leg straight, or if necessary, you can bend them a bit, but try to not bend them in that first little moment when you're pushing yourself up. Let's get one more in. Great. And here is your almost last exercise, a little last surprise coming, but here we go. Standing deck lift on one leg with your right leg first. And here we can start playing a little bit. In this position, try to shift your upper body as far forward as possible almost as if you were doing a hamstring stretch. Keep that straight line between your upper body and your leg. If you want to, you can point your feet or flex your foot. If you've done enough pointing, you can simply flex your foot, pulling your toes in. Now have your neck long and keep your head straight with the crown facing forwards and your shoulder blades pulling nicely together change sides and with this one you can challenge left leg on the floor right leg is lifted and hovering now the challenge would be to bring those arms forward dropping those shoulders and really keeping the shoulders away from your ears pulling shoulder blades together and then pushing these pinky fingers forward and your thumbs upwards to the sky. Try to go at a steady pace. You're almost done. This is 80% of the second round. So you can really go low, as low as you can, working those thighs and working your glutes and your lower back and your back muscles. Great. A little stretch before the storm. Chest opener. So you can catch your breath. This is really for your recovery. So you can either stand or you can walk. You might want to breathe a lot. Try to recover, which means to calm your breath. Exhaling and then inhaling. When you raise those arms, make sure that your chest is not collapsing. Keep those shoulders away from your ears. And in this move, I also like to bend my head sideways to stretch my neck, my trapezius. So you can include a little head stretch, bring the head forward sideways, and then to the other side slowly. Well done. Then still recovering and preparing for the last runnings. Here we go. Hamstring stretch, squat to fold. And since we have a stretch later on, you can now choose to either have this a little bit more active, meaning to increase the speed, have a steady rhythm, exhaling, folding over, inhaling, bending. Always make sure to have your feet pointing outwards when you're squatting to protect your knees and to put them back parallel 
when you're bending over. Really drop your head. You don't want to hold on to that head. You just want to have that head loose. Lose your head. Great, here we go. Running on the spot, dancing on the volcano. This is your last one, I promise. And then we can stretch and relax and release. But first, keep an athletic movement and you can move forwards and backwards and try to have that last running on the spot as good as possible with whatever energy is left inside of you to bounce back from the floor, to have your feet light, your knees picking up, your back in this nice straight line and your arms and athletic movement so your spine can rotate a little bit. Now keep breathing. This is 10 more seconds and you got this. You can do this. Keep moving. Just keep moving. Great. Wonderful. So if you need to walk a bit, you can do that. And you can even do the stretch in a walking movement. So either stand or with each change of legs, you can do one step. If you feel like walking, you feel like moving. Else, just keep your balance, balancing on one foot. I like reaching my arm upwards to the sky and then grabbing the ankle. And we really do that alternating, but with a slow and steady rhythm. Now, when you're stretching, Make sure that your thighs are parallel so your knee doesn't come out to the sides. And you also want to push your hip forward because we're not just stretching our thighs, our quadriceps, but also our hip flexor. So this is important. We've been working the hip flexor and we are contracting the hip flexor all day when we're sitting. Nice. Now keep breathing. Promise this is the last chest stretch. I just find it so important. Great. So interlace your fingers behind your back and really try to enjoy this one now. There's no more workout coming. This is the last and relaxing recovery movement. Couple of stretches that are really designed to release and to help you get on with whatever you still want to do today or if it's the start of the day you can uh, then start your day so it's just a few little moments to enjoy being in your body and you do want to play with this movement a little bit so one thing is to really keep your chest up your chest and your rib cage open Stay grounded with your heels in the ground and have a really long neck like a swan. Keep breathing. Great. Now this one's great because you can do it nicely with the breathing rhythm. Hamstring stretch. We alternate left and right. And we do want to go a little bit slower as we were going in the beginning. So you exhale, folding forward, keeping your back and your legs straight and then inhale. And if you're feeling like stretching and reaching and growing, you can exaggerate this stretching upwards by really opening the chest. You want to have a circular movement when the arms go outwards and then down again like a butterfly movement out and down then exhale forward inhale standing up exhale forward and inhale standing up now start to slow down your breathing rhythm so that you're almost breathing normally as though you would not have worked out at all Wonderful. <laughs> and here's your last little peekaboo side stretch looking under your arm. So this is alternating and call this the C-shape stretch. You want to cross back with one leg and then have that same arm come 
over your head and side bend. And we side bend with the whole spine. That is from your sacrum, from your lower back, all the way to the crown of your head. So your head is looking sideways, makes it exciting. So you can either look forward or if you start to lose balance a little bit, you can also look to the floor where your leg is crossing. So you're looking at your foot or you can look up to your hand. This is a bit more challenging because you're not seeing the ground. Make sure to go slow and steady. And these are your last few moments of stretching, so enjoy them. And oh, I was lying. This is your last one, but this is really the last one. The really the last, last one. Hamstring stretch. Now this one you can do however you like. Uh, let's call this a freestyle, freestyle hamstring stretch. You can either stay in that forward fold and just enjoying that release. That would be my preferred option if it's the end of the day and you really want to wind down. If it's more the start or the middle of the day and there's still stuff you need to do, then you stay active and you're still squatting down and bending forward. Make sure to get loose with that head. Now we're almost at the finish line. Thank you for working out with me. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe if you haven't. Comment below and see you soon.